Okay, well, back to this. So let me uh, re interpret this. Maybe a little different. Maybe it helps sometimes to hear it said a different way. So I read this part as saying that the sentence is going to make a claim about everything in the universe. That this part says for every x, and it means that the predicate expression is going to be said of everything in the universe. For every x in the entire universe, or of every x in the entire universe, this is going to be said. That's how I interpret it. So for every x in the entire universe, where x is just anything in the universe, and then we have the predicate expression that says something about each thing. If x is a cat, then x is a mammal. So we're reading these as relative pronouns referring back to any x. So for any x you pick in the entire universe, it's another way to think of it, if, if x is a cat, then x is a mammal, is the way we say every cat is a mammal. And this is a confusing structure, isn't it, for most students? For five minutes, but after that, after people seem to minutes. get it. Yeah. yeah. It works. One way to explain it is to put it this way. Suppose that um, I said, suppose I said uh, regarding our campus, suppose I said go out around the campus and randomly pick any computer that you come across. If you, ra any computer you pick randomly, if it's an IBM computer, then it will have uh, a Windows operating system. Suppose I say that. So pick any computer at random. If it's IBM, it'll have a Windows operating system. Isn't that equivalent to saying every IBM on campus has a Windows operating system? Yeah. So we're using the if-then expression to capture the idea of all of a group. Anyway, then let's try this. How do we want to say some cats are pets? Okay, this is a, a particular or existential statement. Uh -huh. It's not making a claim about every cat. The word some just means at least one. Could be referring to all, but it's not claiming to be referring to all. So I know it's going to be an existential statement. Okay. So we'll start off with an existential quantifier. All right. I'll write that down, that would be helpful. Okay. And on a computer keyboard, I always tell students, if you want to make the existential quantifier the easy way, you just parenthesis numeral 3 x, and it looks just like a backwards e, mm -hmm. x, okay. and then parenthesis. Okay. Now this is telling me that we're talking about something that exists. There's something out there in the real world. That's why they call these existential statements. Mm -hmm. These don't actually claim that cats actually exist. You and I may know they exist, but all this thing is saying is if there's any cats, they'll be mammals. But it doesn't but, say cats actually exist. It doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. It just kind of leaves that open. Mm -hmm. But these, these are existential claims of saying that something is actually out there in the world. That's what I'm hearing here. There's something out there in the world. And what should we say about this how thing many in the world? Of the, how many of those things? At least one. There's at least, at least one. one thing in the world. And we're going to say something. We're going to say it's a cat. So it'll be capital C, small oh. x. So it's a cat. And it's a, a pet. That is a pet. Okay. Some cats are pets. So ampersand. Uh -huh. And then capital P, small x, close parenthesis. So just like universal statements oftentimes have horseshoes in translation, in translation oftentimes existential statements will have an ampersand. Mm -hmm. um, there's something out there, it's a cat and it's a pet. Something out there is a cat and a pet. Mm -hmm. Some cats are pets. Mm -hmm. So this part tells us what the sentence is about. It's about one or more x's out there. They're not named and they're not described definitely. They're not named and they're not definitely described. So they're just one or more anonymous X's. And then this tells us something about those one or more X's, doesn't it? It says about them, about each one of them, that the X is a cat and it's a pet. Which X's? Well, the one or more X's out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's good. Mm -hmm. And so we can um, talk briefly about two, two mistakes that are commonly made in symbol in translating. Um, suppose I say um, all cats are sweet. 
uh, it's it's uh, tempting sometimes for students to mistranslate this to write for every x x is a cat and x is sweet and uh, assuming that our variables range over everything in the entire universe assuming the universal domain in other words for our variables what does this literally say mark well, it says for everything that exists for everything it's a cat and it's sweet which would mean you're a cat i'm sweet but i would be a sweet cat you'd be a sweet cat this board would be a sweet cat and, Every, D and dwight too. and dwight would be a sweet cat the guy behind the camera uh, and it may be true, if we want to say everything is material and blue, I could say it. For all X, it is M and it is blue. I could say it, but when we say all cats are sweet, this would not be the way to do it. Right, so, so this really says everything in the universe is a cat and it's, it's also sweet. So everything in the universe is a sweet cat. Right. This pen is a sweet cat, your coat is a sweet cat. This board is a sweet cat. The Everything. Ducks. The, the ducks, cold ducks are the sweet lake. Ducks. Yes. Yeah. So, so generally, yeah. when you use an ampersand with a universal quantifier, you're talking about everything, yeah. and uh, you're not just going to be talking about cats. So that's a common mistake that's often made. So how would you write all cats are sweet? So all cats are sweet. Of course, we say for every x in the entire universe. Now we're going to say something about each x in the entire universe. We're going to say if x is a cat, then x is sweet. So we're not saying that everything is a cat. We're just saying of everything. If a thing is a cat, then it's sweet. And as Mark pointed out, I almost called you Marks. <laughs> as, as Mark pointed out, when I say for any x, if x is a cat, then x is sweet. I'm not actually saying there are any cats in existence. I'm just saying if there's a cat, it's sweet. There may or may not be cats. That's a separate issue from this. Okay, and another common mistake, as you know, for students is, suppose I say some uh, maples are, oh, excuse me, some trees are maples. So I say some trees are maples. It's uh, tempting when you're not real clear on this language to s translate it this as there's at least one X such that if it's TX, TX then MX. Now what's the problem here? I am not absolutely sure how to say this in English. It's a bizarre thing to claim. It's saying there's something out there such that if it's a tree then it's a maple. And that may actually be true, but that's not what I mean when I say some trees are maples. Right. Uh, it's, it's just saying a very strange thing, and it's not saying some trees are maples. So if I want to say some trees are maples, I'd say there's something out there, and it's a tree, and it's a maple. Mm -hmm. Right. So just looking at this part, just because there's something that if it's a tree, then it's a maple, it doesn't follow there is actually a tree that's a maple. So the original English was something is both a tree and it's a maple. In other words, some trees are maples. And so I'm making an existential claim when I say some trees are maples. I'm claiming there's something in existence that's both a tree and a maple. This would actually be true of you and me. There is a thing out there like Paul Herrick, and if Paul Herrick was a tree, he'd be a maple. I don't sense. know. If, if I were a tree, would I be a maple? Or if I were a tree, would I be an oak tree? Or would I be a Japanese? Oh, that's true. Uh, yes, that's right. Would yeah. I be an Asian? Yeah. What is the Asian maple? Or a Japanese, Japanese maple. maple? Yeah, okay. Or maybe I'd be a willow tree, a yeah. weeping willow. We still. I don't know. Yeah, but it's clearly not what you originally said. Yes, yeah. and in fact, as you pointed out, it's hard to make sense of this, yeah. this, uh, this hypothetical existential claim. Yeah. But it certainly does not say that there is a tree that's a maple. But, of course, if we turn the horseshoe into an ampersand, now we're saying something very specific and something that does make an existential claim. We're saying there is an X, there's one or more X's out there, and of those X's, one or more of them, X is a tree and X is a maple. That makes so sense. there's something out there that's both a tree and a maple. And again, this is a general sentence because it doesn't identify in its subject one specific thing by name or by definite description. So it's a general sentence. Mm -hmm. So we hope that this will give you, you know, some basic 
uh, practice with translating quantificational sentences and hope we'll, that it will get you into the material a little bit. Anything else you want to add, Mark? I think we're good for now. Okay. All things are good. All things are good. All. <laughs>